So we understand that you've said um, that you'll have hundreds of millions of doses ready in early 2021. But can you clarify for our viewers um, when you actually intend to begin manufacturing the vaccine? And is it in line with Operation Warp Speed? Yeah, we, uh, if, uh, we are already starting to uh, prepare manufacturing, uh, and, and uh, that's ongoing in parallel with the development. We are building out new facilities where we can, uh, where we can produce a massive amount of vaccines, as well as fill them. So you need to fill them in, fill them in vials to be able to bring them to, uh, to people. So, and that's unprecedented. Never in, uh, in history that's been done doing that in a year to get to a, a billion vaccines. Uh, but it's all unprecedented. The way we have already two manufacturing sites which are in full preparation and we're starting a third and a fourth one in the next few weeks and that will be able to uh, those will be able to produce a billion vaccines in the course of next year mm -hmm. okay you mentioned vials as well there paul um what are you going to do to mitigate the potential for vial and stopper shortage issues particularly if you suddenly get a demand for billions of doses for this vaccine? Yeah, we, we have already 250 million vials which, which are in, in the making and produced. So we have very early on, a few months ago already, when we started this project, we looked into, into all of the supplies which were going to be needed for making a billion vaccines. And our teams around the world, they made sure that we had the right orders, the right manufacturers um, uh, already mobilized to make everything we need. And on a monthly basis, we review where we are. And um, so we have taken all the measures to be prepared. But also we have to change certain things in the system. We probably are going to put uh, five vaccines in one vial so that we can save on vials and on stoppers. And that then people will have to be vaccinated five at a time. Um, but I think in these times with corona, uh, that, is that is possible to organize that in pharmacies and in doctor's offices to make sure that we can get a vaccine by priority and then uh, five at a time should be a possibility uh, for making it happen operationally. Mm. Absolutely. Yes, I've heard about um, the five-dose uh, vial that you're working on, Paul. Um, not to labour the point, but I'm sure you can appreciate it is of concern um, to uh, potential uh, users of the vaccine. If the five-dose vial um, doesn't necessarily work, what other options are there to ensure there are enough vials uh, and uh, stoppers out there? Yeah, it's it's all starting manufacturing now, and that is the big that's the big message in this in this COVID nineteen vaccine uh, era, where where we are doing development at the moment. We start clinical trials in September. We know whether the vaccine works by the end of the year, but all the work to make the vaccine is done at risk. So building the manufacturing plants, ordering all the supplies, um, preparing the filling, everything is done at risk. So that by the time the vaccine is available. By the time the data are available, we can deliver the first batches of vaccines as well as be ready for massive upscaling. And we are not waiting for anything at the moment to, uh, to, to do that. And everything we do is here at risk. Mm. Mm -hmm. Sure. And, and to that point as well, Paul, um, what are you doing to prepare for the possibility uh, that this virus could mutate, making any vaccine that is developed irrelevant? Yeah, we are, we are, of course, measuring that very, very carefully. And there are some reports on, on mutations in the virus, which we have looked already at. And at the moment, we have not have yet a mutation which makes the, virus, the vaccine we have uh, in development not usable. But um, if that would happen, then we have to very quickly start on a second uh, vaccine, which, which would solve this. But, uh, but I think that's for the future. The chance that um, it will, will be like an influenza vaccine, uh, we think, is much lower. There will be mutations because every virus mutates, but not to the extent that we need a totally new vaccine every year. Uh, hopefully not. What we might need is because people need to be protected for longer term, uh, this, 
this this virus is not going to disappear in the next one to two years out of, from the world. We need to have boosting probably a year later or two years later to make sure people are protected for the period the virus is around in the world. So it's not going to be over after one uh, one vaccination, I think. We'll have to uh, boost people mm. to be protected for longer term. Mm -mm. Right. So in that case, Paul, then... Um, what's the sort of guidance that you're getting um, from Johnson & Johnson generally in terms of if you do need to look at new vaccines, not every year, but certainly more than once, is the guidance um, that you have all the resources at your disposal to do this regardless of the cost or is profit actually important in this equation? No, in this equation, uh, I, we have the agreement, I have the, the, the guidance and, and the permission from the company to do whatever is needed to get this done. Um, and profit is not important here. Uh, we are a company with a very solid foundation existing for more than 100 years. We are the largest healthcare company in the world. We have built the technology over the years to do this. And uh, we are, going to, uh, we are going, to, going to do everything what's needed from the Johnson & Johnson side to get is done and profit is not important we will do this as a not at a not-for-profit basis covering our costs but that's it um, all the efforts will uh, will be put in and it's unconditional at the moment what we are doing